Greetings. Uh, this is the uh, briefing with the Admiral for Stardate negative 268496. I'm Admiral Owen Swart, Commanding Officer, USS Dauntless, and I am the Admiral in question. Today we're going to be talking about missions. Now, you may recall uh, a few weeks ago we discussed the concept of the mission, as in the Dauntless mission. But I've also thrown about this other term of individual missions from time to time, and it may be a little confusing. So we're, we're just going to cover exactly what I'm talking about there before we get onto the concept of what these missions are. So you may remember we spoke about this. So this is the mission of the Dauntless, so uh, which is to bring the message of Gene Roddenberry's vision for the future of mankind to the people of Africa and the Middle East, which we broke down into a number of different standing orders. Each one is of different levels of importance, numbers one and two, of course, being the most important. Now, this is our overarching mission that governs why we exist and what the Dauntless is for, why we're all here. But there are other activities that happen on a day-to-day -day basis, and these are confusingly also referred to as missions. So we, we didn't invent this confusion. This is something that we inherited from Star Trek. Of course, once again, the fictional Starfleet is what we've modeled ourselves on. That is the uh, the metaphor that we use to, to define our uh, our structures and our operations, and they also use these two very similar terms. I mean, there are there are good reasons why they use the word broader mission and individual missions. Um, it, although it's confusing, we do the same thing. So that's just something we've inherited, and there's not much we can do about that. Now, what what do we mean by missions? So what are these things? So here we have. Um, uh, our schedule. So this is the things that we do, right? So these individual missions are the things that the Dauntless crew does. Let me switch to agenda view. So you can get to this page if you go to our website, you go to the schedule page, here's our calendar. You can also add this to your Google calendar as well if you're a crew member. If you're not a crew member, it might be a little odd for you to add our calendar to your Google calendar, but you're welcome to do so. It is publicly visible. Um, so here listed in our calendar, especially the ones in, in, uh, in sort of mustardy yellow, those are our events. So these are things that we call missions. These are things that require us to actually do things. And it just so happens that this uh, briefing is an event. It is a mission, which means that people have to do a thing. Members of the crew have to do a thing. So if I click on this, you can see here's a description of the mission. We'll go in through these uh, these different kinds of details that are relevant for a mission in a moment. Uh, but that is one mission. We have another uh, mission tomorrow night. We're going to be playing Star Trek Online here together. The active duty crew members are going to be playing. On Friday night, we have a Star Trek watch party again here online on the Discord. And then on Saturday, we have a thing called an away mission, Park Run Tau Team. Now, I've spoken about uh, uh, Park Run before. I've also spoken about what Tau Team means. And we're going to talk today about what away mission means. Here's some similar details. And so it goes. If you keep on scrolling down, you'll see a bunch of missions. In a couple of weeks, we've got Comic-Con Cape Town. That's very exciting. I'm sure I'll be talking about that um, in the weeks to come as well. So those are the missions that we have coming up. And... Uh, so let's talk a little bit more about what the missions are. So as a correspondence chapter, which again, the Dauntless isn't really a correspondence chapter or officially not anymore. And that, that label never really fit us very well, but it was officially what we were designated as for a few years. As a correspondence chapter, most of the USS Dauntless activities happen online. But there are many occasions in which Dauntless crew members will decide to get together in real life and have some fun together. So online activities count as missions and real life activities also count as missions. Missions are important because attending them earns members points towards their next rank promotions. So remember when we spoke about ranks and earning promotions, one of the criteria for virtually all the ranks all the way up the ladder was attending missions. We're going to talk a few in a few minutes about what attending means exactly. It's, it might be a little more complicated than uh, it, it sounds, but we'll get to that. Attending missions is very important. The, the higher you go in the rank structure, the more missions you have to attend in order to meet that requirement for your rank promotion. But participating, and that's through attendance, is vital to how an organization like the Dauntless works. We need you to show up. We need you to participate. If you're not doing that, then why are you here, right? That's that's a very important question. So missions are kind of core to what we do and how we operate. It's kind of the structure around how we organize our activities is through missions. 
Uh, list of missions can, are currently sanctioned can be found on the Dauntless calendar. That's what we just looked at here. It's here on the schedule page. And again, you can add that to your Google, Google calendar if you want. We're going to go through this how to run an away mission in a little while. We're going to skip ahead to this general description of missions, which is official Dauntless events. In order to qualify as an official mission, an event must be uh, organized, run, or hosted by a Dauntless crew member. That crew member must have authorization from the command staff beforehand for the event to be considered an official mission. So the command staff is, that is the command department, um, that is the commanding officer, executive officer, second officer, recruiting officer, and deputy recruiting officer. So when whenever somebody on board wants to plan a mission, there is a way through which they can submit a mission proposal. We'll go through the details about what that looks like now. And that has to go to the command staff for approval. It's the command staff's job to look through the existing missions that are scheduled, make sure there were no conflicts, look at the details of the proposed mission, make sure that it is does align with our values and with our capabilities and, and what needs to be done, to, to check to see if there are any uh, things that stand out about the mission proposal that need to be addressed or reviewed before it can be published and invited, and the rest of the crew can be invited, that kind of thing. That is part of the job of the command staff. The command staff may decide not to grant authorization, in which case the event will not be regarded as officially recognized by or affiliated with the USS Dauntless. This is pretty rare. That would only happen in, oh, okay, um, we'll go into details about why that might happen. But it's it's pretty rare that that would happen. Typically, the command staff, if they have any concerns about the mission proposal, will come back to you and say, listen, we need to look at this, we need to look at this and look at this. Once those issues are addressed, then we'll schedule it and go ahead. It's it's pretty rare that a, that a, a mission proposal would be outright rejected by the command staff. In addition to having that command staff approval, at least two of the following criteria must apply in order for something to qualify as a dauntless mission. All members of the dauntless were welcome to attend. So in other words, it was published so that everybody could come if they wanted to. That doesn't mean that everybody was practically capable of attending. So if it was sanctioned in a specific um, sector, for example, obviously people in other sectors wouldn't be physically capable of attending, but they were still welcome to attend, at least in theory, if not in practice. The event was posted on the Dauntless calendar at least two days before it took place. We want to make sure that everybody who has the capability of, capability of attending an event has uh, sufficient notice beforehand so that they can attend. So we want to make sure that these events are posted at least two days beforehand. And then at least three Dauntless crew members were in attendance. This should, whenever possible, be substantiated by taking photos of the event and posting them online. So these are three criteria. but I draw your attention to this here, at least two of the following criteria must apply. So we need to have at least two of these three. This last one can be tricky, especially for small away teams. There are plenty of our away teams that consist of only one or two members, in which case getting three members to participate is practically impossible. But that's okay. As long as you, as you have these first two criteria, you're good to go and your mission is sanctioned. Um, this allows us a little bit of flexibility, partly for that reason and partly for things like this uh, second one can be a bit onerous. So if we want to be able to schedule something last minute because we only learned that something was happening tomorrow and we want to be able to schedule an event because it would be fun to the crew, but we don't have en enough advance notice, this gives us the opportunity by overlooking this criterion and only attending to the, the first and the third criteria, it allows us the flexibility to schedule that mission anyway. If we do post that mission last minute and nobody turns up, well then, unfortunately, it's not going to work out. Uh, uh, Chief Kotsa points out that uh, short notice happens frequently, far more often than we would prefer, because unfortunately we don't have perfect knowledge of everything that's going on in the world. And sometimes when you're relying on things like social media for announcements of relevant events that are popping up, scheduling a mission to go and attend that event can be tricky because short notice is an issue. But it's okay, as long as you've got enough people to attend, then it can still count. If an authorized event fails to meet these criteria, the command staff will evaluate whether or not it will be recognized for rank promotion and other purposes after the fact. So let's just say you uh, schedule a mission at last mi at uh, uh, last minute and not enough people attend, then the command staff might still decide that it could still count for rank promotion purposes. Um, that's up to the command staff to determine whether or not it was a, a frivolous attempt or if it really was a sincere attempt to get a mission going. Um, that is taken on a case by case basis. So what are the different kinds of missions? So there are three main kinds of events 
on the Dauntless, two of which are different types of missions, and the third is something different. First one is shipboard missions, which we usually just shorten to missions. These are default missions. These are conducted from aboard the metaphorical ship. So remember, we all serve on a on an imaginary ship called the USS Dauntless, which is not a real ship. It is a metaphor. So that is the metaphorical ship. And in the metaphor, each participant is sitting at his or her station somewhere on the ship. If you've seen Star Trek, you know that everybody on board a ship has a job and they all have a station where they sit, which is it's their chair on the bridge or it's their computer station in engineering or it's their office in sick bay or wherever it might be. Each crew member on the ship has their station. And when we are at, at our metaphorical station, that is when we are participating in one of these missions and they are taking part from that location. So in practical terms and in real world terms, what that means is that these are online events like this one, where each member participates from their respective internet device. So whether that's a workstation or a pad, you'll notice that these are links and I'm going to cover what these uh, terms mean. A workstation is basically your computer, your desktop or your laptop. Pad means a, a smartphone or a tablet or something like that. Um, these can include, the kinds of missions that can be included under that are online watch parties. Whenever there is a new episode of Star Trek, we gather on Friday night here in Discord and we watch the episode together. So that would count as one of those missions. Online gaming sessions, as I pointed out, we have one scheduled for tomorrow night. We're going to be playing Star Trek online together or meetings on Discord. Those will all count as shipboard missions. And in fact, this very mission right now, this briefing that we're hosting, we're streaming it directly to the the... Uh, the screening room in our uh, Dauntless Discord. So this counts as a mission for anybody who attends. The second category of missions is away missions. These are generally held out in the world. So if, if some or all of the participants are expected to leave their home in order to attend, then it should be considered an away mission. So if, remember, if you cast your mind back to Star Trek, whenever the crew had to leave the ship for whatever reason, so if they had to beam down to a planet or climb in a shuttlecraft and fly away, that consi was considered an away mission. They were away from the ship. They had to leave their house. And we use uh, that same metaphor here. Remember the away team metaphor that we use for those isolated pockets of members in different geographic locations around the world. The away missions are missions that are conducted by those individual away teams. Uh, members are strongly encouraged to wear uniforms when attending away missions unless otherwise indicated. So it's um, when you're attending a shipboard mission, most of the time you're not on camera. I'm on camera now, so I'm wearing uniform, but the people in the chat room are not. Uh, and that's typically the case when we have a watch party or a Star Trek online mission. We're not required to dress up in uniform because, frankly, it's a waste of time because we don't we don't even have our cameras on most of the time. If we do have cameras on, then it's encouraged. But generally speaking, if you're on a shipboard mission, you uh, can wear whatever you like. But if you're attending an away mission, you're encouraged to wear a uniform. I remember we addressed uniforms a few episodes ago, uh, and the, the specific mission that you're encouraged to wear is determined by the mission commander. Uh, and would be that would be informed by what kind of a mission it is. Ideally, it would be this, the Class B standard duty uniform. Otherwise, it could be the LU. As you can see in this photograph there, I'm wearing my LU. Um, so whatever the mission in question is, that would be the appropriate mission. There is a, uh, a caveat there. So some shipboard missions require you to dress an avatar in a uniform. This was what we used to call a virtual away mission. We no longer have that as a, as a separate designation anymore, but the pr same principle applies. If, for example, you're playing Star Trek Online, as our crew are in this image over here, you'll notice that each crew member is dressed in a virtual uniform. So that is a virtual copy of your standard uh, duty uniform, your Class B uniform that you would be wearing in real life. And then that counts towards uh, rank promotion uh, purposes for, uh, for the mission. So uh, away missions out in the world, members are strongly encouraged to wear uniforms. Away missions can include blood donation meetups. So these, again, are our most important mission. The, they are probably the only mission that are mandatory for all standard duty personnel. Uh, very, very important. And we encourage everybody to wear uniforms for this. Um, the thing about blood donation missions is that the SDU is a little bit impractical for blood donations because if you were going to give blood, you have to roll up your sleeve and the fabric that these things are made from is not very flexible. So we actually recommend the LU. So that's this uniform 
uniform here, the colored t-shirt, that's actually a more practical uniform for blood donation missions. But generally speaking, if we're meeting out in person, it's this, the class B, the SDU. It can be a game site at a crew member's home. Again, you're sitting in somebody's house, there's not much point in dressing up in an SDU, so an LU is suitable for that. Uh, things like hikes, picnics, 5k runs, etc. Those are uh, examples of away missions. There is a subcategory of away mission, which is what we call multi-vector away missions. So these are away missions where multiple away teams engage in the same activity in different locations simultaneously. This is typically how we run our blood donation uh, meetups, where we have one mission on the calendar, one event, and then all of the different away missions in all of away teams and all of their separate sectors are expected to go and participate in their local area doing their own thing. So all of those different teams are doing the same thing at the same time or within the same 24 hour window. Obviously we have to account for uh, different time zones when we're spread around the globe the way we are. That is what we call a multi-vector away mission. We are attacking the mission through multiple vectors simultaneously. Now the third type of event is not a mission and that is off-duty events. These are for events that have no particular agenda and they are intended entirely as social gatherings. They're not mandatory, nobody's expected to attend, but they're just nice to have. They take place online or in person and are not logged as either missions or away missions. We don't take a roll call or anything like that. Uniform requirements don't apply. It's completely casual, just fun get togethers for whatever reason. Uh, when you're in an event, there's an event chain of command relevant, but every now and then it might be, somebody might need to make a decision about what the, the future of the mission is going to entail hypothetical example, let's say you're going for a picnic, as you're enjoying the picnic, storm clouds roll in, somebody needs to make a call about when the time is to abandon the picnic and go and find a nearby restaurant to finish the event, or something like that. Who is that person who makes that call? That is the mission commander. So it's, it's also relevant for rank promotion purposes. So when you are commanding a mission, you get twice the recognition for attending that mission as if you are simply attending. And uh, there are ways of determining who is in command of a given mission. So by default, the host or organizer of the event is in command regardless of who uh, of the, that person's rank. So if you are a crewman recruit and you have a games day at your house, you are in command of that mission, even if an admiral attends. If the host and organizer are not the same person, the organizer has priority and the host is second in command. So this is an interesting situation which I've seen arise a couple of times. Let's say um, one crew member, crew member Smith, is hosting a games day at, uh, at his flat, but uh, crewman Jones is actually the one who's organized it. He's the one who's gotten all the details together, he's got, he sent out the invitations, he's organized the snacks and brought the games. So in that case, the organizer, Jones, and the host, Smith, are not the same people. So when that is the case, the, the organizer has priority, he's the mission commander, and the host, who is uh, Smith, he has is second in command. So if Jones has to leave early or something like that, then command falls to Smith. Both members are considered to have commanded the event for rank promotion purposes. If there is no host and the organizer of the event is not present, the highest ranking attendee is in command. We try to avoid this eventuality, but it happens sometimes. Let's say you're going to a convention and the person who would have been the mission commander can't show up. They Maybe they, they're having car trouble or they're ill that day. The, so even though that is the person who's done all the organizing for attending that uh, convention, they're not able to be there. So then whoever is the highest ranking attendee then assumes command of the away mission. Civilians who is non-crew members, that uh, as well as passengers and reserves, we, we, co we covered those, cannot command a Dauntless event, even though they may host one. So civilians and uh, passengers and reserves are often invited to missions. Um, they, they're often welcome to join us. In fact, we encourage it for certain kinds of missions, but they can't be considered as having been commanded, even if they hosted it or something like that. So even if we're hosting it at a civilian's house, they can't count as having commanded it because there's no way to put that command attribution. So then that falls to the next highest ranking crew member on board. Uh, point of clarification, third party public events. Uh, I've already hinted at this, but it, it's worth explaining. So a Dauntless event may be considered an event within an event. So for example, a public air show would not, li not likely be organized or hosted by a Dauntless crew member, but a group outing to that air show might be, and therefore could be potentially considered a Dauntless event uh, if it met with the criteria above. So we don't necessarily, within the Dauntless, have to be the organizer of the event, of the convention, of the party, of the whatever it might be. We just need to be organized our little group attending that event. That's worth paying attention to. Um, personal events are pretty much the only criterion of events that would be rejected by uh, the command staff. So if you are trying to schedule your 
personal birthday party or your wedding or your child's baptism or something like that as an away mission we're probably not going to approve that you're welcome to invite crew members to that party we're not going to discourage that but that's not going to count as an away mission uh, repeating events are fairly common. Some events are regular in nature, weekly, fortnightly, monthly, etc. Et These events may be granted authorization in advance for a given period. So when you are submitting your request for a mission, uh, you would specify whether or not this is a one-off or whether it repeats multiple times. So maybe if it's a convention, for example, then it, it repeats five times because it's five days long, or maybe it's a monthly event or a weekly event. You can specify ahead of time and have that scheduled in advance. So you don't need to re-request it every week or every month or every day or whatever it might be. Marketing and branding. When an event has been authorized, the organizer is welcome to use the USS Dauntless name, logo, and other branding material in their marketing for the event. These can be obtained from the command staff if required. So the, the, the communications department on board will do a basic level of marketing for your event, but it, especially if you would like uh, civilians to join you, you might want to do a little bit of promotion for your event on your own. And when you do so, if that event has been approved by the Dauntless command staff, you're welcome to use the Dauntless logo. So that's this symbol down here in the corner, uh, this one up here, get a closer view of it there. You're welcome to use that. You're welcome to use the USS Dauntless name in your promotion for the event if that's something that you would like to do. Before we move on, I see we've got a question. We've got the virtual uniform and shown on the universe, uh, uniform page, if I remember correctly. That is from Captain von Kroenen. Yes, that is correct. If we go to the uniform page on the Dauntless website, you'll see that there is a breakdown of how to construct your uh, SDU on Star Trek Online. It gives you the correct options to choose from. Also have a question from Colonel Joubert. I have a question about having civilians attend events. So not an away mission where there are civilians there already, where it would be preferable to recruit civilians. For example, a mission that would require access to the Discord, such as the watch party or online gaming session. Is that, that something that happens or is ship access prohibited to civilians? That is a great question. So generally speaking, we don't permit civilians to attend events on the Dauntless Discord. Um, some things like the watch party, we, we have taken a command decision to keep that private specifically due to active duty personnel. Um, but just because that's how it's always been done doesn't mean that that's necessarily how we have to continue doing it in the future. If we wanted to, for example, have a Star Trek online gaming session and invite civilians to that, the way the Discord is currently set up, we can't currently grant people access to it. But um, I'm sure that if we put our heads together with the security team, we could come up with a way of granting people temporary access to our Discord server for the, the purposes of a single event and then um, uh, having that that um, access expire at the end of the event and have it be done in a safe way. I'm sure we could solve that problem if a mission required it. So although that's not generally how it's set up, if that was something that you really wanted to do in terms of your mission request, we could probably figure out how to make that happen. Thank you for that question. That was great. Um, all right, so there are different kinds of missions and uh, lots of considerations that need to be taken into account when you're submitting them. Um, the, one of the considerations that need to be taken into account is mission priority. So we have a priority system that determines how important or describes how important a given mission is. This is a signal to your uh, the people that you're inviting to your mission about how much attention they should be paying to that specific mission. And that is, aligns with back to the mission. So our, our how much your individual mission uh, is in line with these standing orders, that will determine the priority of the individual mission that you are attempting to schedule and how that should be regarded. So three priorities, let's start at the bottom. So priority three are casual events or events of low importance. These events represent a purely social aspect of Dauntless life. Crew members are encouraged to gather for activities that don't necessarily relate to the functional purpose of the USS Dauntless. These may include hikes, picnics, non-Star Trek movie nights, non-competitive gaming events, camping trips, or general social events. Participation in these events is entirely optional for all members, but attendance will improve the likelihood of being considered for recognition and advancement. So remember we spoke about the kind of event back here. Uh, yeah, so off-duty events. These are these would all, by, def by definition, be considered priority three because they are so not important that we don't even take roll call. But there will be some actual missions that would clarify as, qualify as priority three as, as well, including, for example, hikes or picnics, where we would take a roll call to see who attended. We might want to have civilians join us, and that might be a fun time as well. Um, and for those occasions, we would want to see who attended so that we could log it for rank promotion purposes. So the more of these kinds of things that you attend, the more likely you are to be considered 
considered for advancement in the future. Um, but it's not mandatory, it's not required, it's not even expected. So the, a good way of thinking about priority three is that you are welcome to attend. Priority two is events of significant importance or events of great importance but with limited scope. So these events represent the day-to-day -day functioning of the Nautilus. Active duty members are expected to attend the majority of these events as relevant to their department and or sector assignments. These may include local generic fandom conventions, Star Trek watch parties, mission readiness training, staff meetings, community service events, or sanctioned competitive gaming events. While participation event in these events is not mandatory, active duty members who consistently fail to attend a majority of relevant events will likely not be considered for recognition and advancement. So a good way of thinking about priority two is that you are expected to attend if you're an active duty crew member. So these are uh, the kind of most of the events that we schedule will, will typically fall under priority two because these represent the day-to-day -day functioning of the Nautilus. So our watch party on a Friday night, that's quite important because you know we are a Star Trek fan club and watching Star Trek together is kind of important. So you're expected to attend that. It's not the end of the world if you can't make it, um, but if you, you don't make it to a lot of priority two missions, your status as an active duty member might be called into question because really that's kind of the point of being here is participating in those events. So uh, Star Trek watch parties, mission readiness training, so that's things like uh, park runs on a Saturday morning, you're kind of expected to participate. Staff meetings are quite important. We don't really have a lot of staff meetings, but on the very rare occasions that we have them, those are pretty important. Community service events, sanctioned competitive gaming events, that kind of thing. These are these are pretty important to the day-to-day -day running of the ship, and you're kind of, as an active duty uh, crew member, expected to attend those events. Then we get to priority one. These are obviously the most important ones. Events of critical importance to the existence and overall mission of the USS Dauntless, especially as it relates to standing orders number one and number two. So critical importance means that they are the point of us being here. These are why we're here, is priority one events. They're so important that they are indispensable. So as they relate to the standing order, so standing order number one, uh, to remind you, is to promote Star Trek to our friends, families, and people around us. These are events core to the purpose and existence of the USS Dauntless, such as opening nights for new Star Trek feature films in theaters, local Star Trek conventions, and that kind of thing. So it's been a few years, uh, it's been eight years, in fact, since our last Star Trek feature film. Uh, there are always more feature films on the horizon, but the next time one comes out in theaters, uh, uh, making a public appearance, uh, to celebrate the uh, the launch of that is quite important as a, uh, a brand um, awareness raising uh, function for us and it, as part of our community outreach to try and recruit new members. If there are er any Star Trek conventions in our area, it's also very important that we attend that again in uniform and make our presence known. It's been a very long time since there was a Star Trek convention in uh, South Africa in Cape Town. I was on the organizing committee for the last one, which I think was back in 2009, uh, and it, we, it failed to get the, uh, the uptake that we were hoping for. But we also have members in various other parts of the world where they are perhaps uh, more likely to be dedicated Star Trek conventions, uh, particularly in the United States. So when that happens, it's, uh, it's quite important that those crew members attend those Star Trek conventions. Then there's uh, standing order number two, which is to encourage initiatives to help bring about the future envisioned in Star Trek. So these are the ones that are most frequent. These are the ones we see most often. Uh, these events are core to the philosophy and purpose of the USS Dauntless and have real world life or death consequences associated with participation and would include missions with an active philanthropic uh, focus, especially blood donations. So the blood donation missions are something that we do um, just over every two months as part of our uh, our adherence to standing order number two. So donating blood is the single most efficient thing you can do as a non-medical professional in order to save another person's life. If you can give somebody a unit of blood that can save up to three people's lives, you can give one unit of blood every um, eight weeks. Or we, we schedule the missions every nine weeks just so we've got a little margin for error in there. Um, so we gather together as a crew and have a multi-vector away mission every two months in which we we gather together in our respective away teams in our respective cities and we donate blood together. Of course, not everybody is physically capable of donating blood, but those who can do and the rest of the crew are there to assist them and to support them in doing so. Very, very important, critically important. Uh, this category also includes a chapter general meetings. I can't even remember the last time we had one of those, but if we were to decide to have a general meeting again, uh, this would also fall under category, uh, under priority one. 
Participation in these events is mandatory for all active duty crew members within the sector. If unable to attend, a negative RSVP is required along with an explanation of the reason for dereliction. So again, these are the most important missions that we do. These are the reason why we're here. This is what we do as a group, as an organization, as an institution. We we organize and run these priority one missions. If you're not able to attend one, you need to let us know you're not coming and you kind of need to let us know why. Um, because you're expected as an active duty crew member, you are required to attend one of these events. Uh, crew members who fail to attend or to RSVP negatively for the event may be assigned a failed to report in flag on their crew evaluation, which will count against consideration for future uh, recognition and advancement opportunities. So it's really a big deal. If you don't attend and you don't let us know you're not coming to one of these priority one missions, um, there are going to be consequences. And we don't want to have to do that. I mean, we, we're here by choice. We're choosing to be part of this institution. And this is what this institution does, right? Why, why would you choose to not to participate in the most important thing that we do and still want to be a member of this group? Uh, frankly, I'm mystified why anybody would fall into that category. It's quite strange. But anyway, so we have to have these kinds of safeguards in place to make sure that everybody understands the importance of these priority one missions that are critical to what we do. Um, so we're going to go into more detail in a future video about what crew evaluations are. Um, and we might also touch on more on the details of what a uh, fail to report in flag. Uh, but I just want to go into a bit more detail before we move on about what exactly mission attendance looks like. So what, it's, what that means, it's perhaps a little more complicated than it sounds. So attending missions is one of the ways that crew members can earn credit towards rank promotions. It's also an important social exercise that allows the crew to engage with each other in person, building trust and cohesion. It's the task of the mission commander. So that is the person who is the commander of the mission to log the attendance of all Dauntless crew members at each event. So you're required to take a roll call as part of your duties as a mission commander. It's at the discretion of the mission commander uh, to what tool he or, sh or she wishes to employ in order to log crew attendance. A report must be submitted to the executive officer on or before the last day of each calendar month, listing all events you have commanded and which crew members attended it, each one. So there's no specific tool that we re recommend for taking a, uh, a, a roll call. You use whatever you want, as long as you incorporate that into your report that is submitted to the executive officer. I'll show you in a moment what uh, our recommended tool for use, for submitting that report is. From time to time, it may happen that multiple away missions are taking place simultaneously in the same location. The protocol for how to log attendance for that would be would depend on the specifics. In general, any crew members who check in with the mission commander of either mission can be considered to have attended one or both. It is at the mission commander's discretion how that should be allocated. For guidance on this, contact the CEO or EXO. That's a pretty rare situation, but it has happened in the past where we have multiple crew, uh, away missions taking place in the same place at the same time. So uh, an example that springs to mind is at a convention. You might have, for example, a cosplay event and a competitive gaming tournament happening in the same room at the same time. Those are two quite different events and participating in them is quite different. But we want to make sure that uh, participation is logged for both events. So each respective away mission will have its own respective commander. And if you are participating in one or both, it's up to you to go to the appropriate mission commander for the one that you're attending and check in either with this one or with that one, or ideally with both. And that's where you make sure that you get uh, credit for participating in both. So when we are conducting the uh, the crew evaluations, which again, I'll go to in more detail about in a future video, we assign attendance points. So for the purposes of rank promotions, it may be useful to think of attendance in terms of points. These points are applied only to the attendance requirement of the rank promotion criteria. Hosting or commanding a mission is listed under a separate requirement. So it does count extra hosting or commanding a mission, but it's it's listed separately. It's, it's somewhere else on the, uh, the mission promotion requirements. So for rank promotion purposes, there are four possible point values a crew member might earn, one per mission per crew member. So you can earn two points if you attend the mission while wearing a uniform. You can earn one, mission, uh, one point if you simply attended the mission, zero points if you did not attend. You get minus one point if you failed to report in. There are, again, other consequences for failed to report in, but one of those consequences is that you get a minus one attendance point. This is only relevant to uh, priority one missions and only if you fail to check in at all. Um, Again, the fail to report in is, is a really bad thing. You don't want to have that on your record. It looks really, really bad for you. Um, 
So what counts as attending? It's important to note that under normal circumstances, attendance is logged, not participation. So we are interested in the fact that you showed up for the event. It doesn't really matter what you did there. So say again, hypothetically, our event is that we are going to play paintball. Let's say that you are not physically capable of playing paintball for whatever reason. Perhaps you have an injury or, or an aversion to it or something like that. You don't want to play paintball. The rest of the crew are going there to play paintball, but that's okay because playing paintball isn't what gets you the point. It's showing up at the paintball game. The rest of the crew wants you to be there so that even if you can't play with them, perhaps you can spectate, perhaps you can share a meal with them after the, afterwards, you can enjoy the social nature of the event, even if you're not participating in the actual paintball part of it. So attendance is what matters, not participation. For the purposes of rank pro uh, promotion, the Dauntless recognizes only the act of being present when a mission is underway. We consider moral support to be as important as actual participation. However, some Starfleet Marine Corps awards specify participation, not mere attendance in certain types of events. So if you are a mission commander and you're, uh, you're building your mission in, in such a way that you would like to have your participants earn credit towards a specific Marine Corps award, you want to make sure that you have your uh, your participation criteria clearly spelled out in your mission proposal so that your attendees know that in that specific case, uh, participating is relevant, not necessarily just attendance. So by default, attendance is the only thing we're looking at for rank promotion purposes, but for other purposes, uh, participation is important. So when you have one of those kinds of missions, you want to make sure that you keep a separate list of all of those who attended and of all of those who participated. If the event is a competitive gaming tournament or something of that nature, the final scores should be included in your report. This is so that everybody can see who won and how everybody did. It's ultimately at the discretion of the mission commander how attendance is measured, but there are some common sense guidelines that should be considered. One or more of the following could be employed as the criterion. So it can be a little bit vague, especially if you're talking about a convention where there are a lot of people moving around. Uh, it's not necessarily obvious what uh, participating in the mission looks like. So you want to have some idea in, in, in your head of what attendance looks like. So here's some guidelines. The member was in the immediate vicinity of the rendezvous point for a significant period of time, such as 20 minutes or more. So if you have a ron specific rendezvous point at a convention, let's say one of the crew members uh, has a stall at the convention, we can designate that stall as being the rendezvous point. And if that person arrived and hung around the stall for a little while, that counts as having attended. The member checked in with the mission commander by exchanging vocal greetings, introductions, and proper salutations. So in other words, the person walked up to the mission commander and said, hello, sir, I'm reporting for duty. That counts as participation. Or the member was present in uniform, displaying dauntless or SFI insignia, such as wearing an SFI polo shirt or a dauntless cap. So displaying those kinds of insignia would also count as participation, if that's how you think it should count. So in essence, we want to ensure that any crew member who made an effort to be part of the away mission, even if it was in a supportive or spectator sense, is recorded as having attended. The mission commander may use whatever criteria you believe represents that intent, given the uh, specific nature of your event. So as the mission commander, it's kind of up to you to decide what participation looks like. Generally speaking, we want to make sure that attending is the most important thing. That's not always uh, simple or the easiest way to classify things or the most practical, but that's the intent. We want to make sure that people are rewarded for showing up, even if they're not actively doing the thing that needs to be done. So that's mission attendance. The next question is, how do you schedule a mission? Um, so running an away mission is, we've already covered a lot of these details, so I'm not going to go read through this point by point, but effectively your steps are something like this. So step one is you need to choose a mission. So you need to decide what the mission is that you want to run. Obviously, if you're thinking about scheduling a mission, you probably already have an idea, but that's, um, that's what it should be. Uh, there are a few uh, exceptions to what can be classified as an away mission, but generally speaking, those are limited to personal events such as birthday parties, weddings, baptisms, that kind of thing. So I mentioned this before, if you have your, one of your personal events and you want to schedule that as an away mission, that's generally not going to be permissible. You're welcome to invite the crew, please do, but that's not an away mission. Um, you should decide on the relevant details like when, where and when your mission should take place. And also bear in mind that there are, might be other missions already scheduled at that time. So you're going to want to check the, uh, the, the schedule, here it is, and make sure that there are no other missions that might conflict with your proposed mission before you submit your proposal. And it's also a good idea to think of a, of a clever theme appropriate name for your mission. For example, a movie night, 
I mean, that doesn't sound very Star Trek, so we would call this something like an anthropology mission, because now we're going out and studying 21st century human technology. This is not strictly required, but it just adds to the fun of it. Um, a game, a paintball session or a games night could be called a tacti uh, tactical simulation. A hike could be a, called a planetary survey, that kind of thing. You can come up with a fun name like that. Um, next, you want to go to command approval. So once you've got the details of your away mission ready to go, you will submit your, uh, uh, your away mission request using this mission approval request form. It'll prompt you for all the appropriate details, and that will then be submitted to the command staff who will review your proposal and then either come back to you with questions or revisions, or they will outright approve it and then it'll be added to the calendar. So step three is publication. Um, it will typically be added to the calendar automatically. This is part of the process. So when the Dauntless uh, command crew approve your, uh, your mission proposal, they will have it added to the calendar themselves. But you might want to promote it a little bit more. Perhaps you want to announce it on social media or something like that to try and get more people to come in. And this uh, would happen here in step three. Step four happens on the day. So there are a number of things you want to keep in mind during the time of the actual mission. So you want to be available via the, the designated comm channel in case somebody's lost or they have last minute questions or something like that. You want to send out a reminder several hours prior to the mission. If you have logged your mission on the calendar, this kind of thing is typically happening automatically. We've set up a number of bots, especially on Discord, that will send out automated reminders. Uh, so hopefully you don't have to do that manually, but it doesn't hurt. Uh, rather over communicate than under communicate. And then during the mission, you want to make sure your uniform or disguise is uh, obvious to your attendees so that you're easy to find and post a selfie on the official comm channel if necessary. So it doesn't hurt to, on the official comm channel, you have to, as mission commander, designate which is the official comm channel for your mission. On that, it doesn't uh, hurt to just post a selfie of what you look like that day so that your attendees, especially crew members who might not have met you before, know what you look like and are able to find you. Uh, if possible, have a beam down marker set up on a table nearby so crewmates may uh, may not have met you before know where to go. So if you're rendezvousing at a, at a table, at a restaurant, for example, we have a printable PDF that you can fold up and put on the table that says USS Dauntless beam down marker, and then people know to look for that so that they can find you. You want to make sure that you continue to be, uh, be available on the official comm channel. So on Discord or something, make sure that your, your pad, your phone is charged up with uh, battery power and with data so that you can remain uh, connected. Then once people start arriving, you want to make sure you have a list of everybody who has attended as well as those who attended in uniform. This is relevant for their rank promotion purposes. During the mission, you want to take a leadership role, ensuring that everybody knows exactly what's expected of them at any given time. So you are the mission commander. It's up to you to make sure that there's a clear directive. Everybody knows what the directive is and to make decisions on the fly if necessary. And also be prepared to step up in a case of emergencies. Emergencies happen sometimes. That doesn't mean you necessarily need to carry a first aid kit everywhere you go, but it's not a bad idea to do that anyway. Um, and if you are not a first aider, that's okay. Just make sure that you know where the nearest aid station might be so that that person can receive the assistance they need. After the mission, there is some cleanup you need to do. First, you want to make... Uh, Make sure everybody leaves safely. You don't want to leave anybody standing in the rain or standing behind, especially vulnerable members like uh, people who are elderly or infirm or perhaps cadets. You want to make sure that everybody gets onto their transport safely on their way home. You want to uh, check around the mission site, make sure that nobody has left any personal belongings behind and gather them up if anybody has. And then you want to complete the mission report. This is very important. If you haven't done this, then all the work that you've done up to this point goes away and nobody gets recognition for any of the work that they did. So the way that the mission report is done, uh, we've had to change this a couple of times over the years, but as of now, we are currently reverting back to this format, which is a Google form. You go to this form here and say, um, it's called the USS Dauntless Mission Report Form. You enter in the details, so you identify it yourself. You choose which away team uh, completed the mission, uh, your name and rank, uh, the mission commander. If So if, if the mission commander themselves are not able to complete this uh, uh, report that you can designate another member of the way team to do it for you. So if you are not the mission commander, let them know who the mission commander was, the name of the mission as it was listed on the calendar. So you want to go back to your calendar and check that you have the correct name, make sure that you have the right name for it there so that you can list it in that detail there. The date of the mission when it was, then you describe in your own words what happened during the mission. So maybe you're just recapping what the schedule was, where you went to this place, we did this thing and everything was fine. That's acceptable. Then you want to give your list of who attended, especially who attended in uniform. And then 
ideally you want to try and have some kind of media that proves that everybody was there. So you want to have a group selfie or some other kind of photo or video to demonstrate that things actually happened. And here is where you can upload that and include that in your report. Um, if the, the photos that you've presented are of sufficient quality, you might be asked by the communications department if they can have your permission to share that on social media, but they will not do so without your explicit permission. Uh, we would ask you to consider doing that if you wouldn't mind. That would be great. All right, so that is missions in a nutshell. This uh, thing went a lot longer than I expected it to. It looks like I have a lot to say about missions, but that's okay. I've said everything I need to say for now. Let's go back to here. All right, thank you very much. If there are any more questions, now is the time. Um, missions, again, are, are basically the, they are the verb. They're the thing that we do from day to day here aboard the Dauntless. Some are more important than others, and uh, they are how we organize our activities, as in the form of these discrete missions. We have a number of missions already scheduled on the mission, so on the calendar. You can go check out the events page, it's the schedule page on the Dauntless website. You can add that to your Google Calendar so you can keep up to date on what's happening. We also, as I mentioned, have a number of bots set up on our Discord so that uh, upcoming events are automatically added to the events panel on the top of your Discord screen so you can get reminders on the bridge channel, etc., etc., etc. It's it's easy to keep track of all of these events. That's the thing that happens. Um, uh, one last comment from Katrin van Krenen was informative as always. Thank you. Biggest takeaway is that presence matters and is easily forgotten. 100%. We want to make sure that people show up. Showing up is the most important thing. Even if you can't do the thing that the mission is about, you can't donate blood, you can't play paintball, you can't uh, play Star Trek Online, whatever it is, as long as you're there, then there is something that you can do to help the people that are doing that thing. And you can't help if you're not there. Showing up is the most important thing. Um, all right. I think we're going to call it there. Thank you, everybody. I just want to thank who has arrived. I see Captain Frank Renan, Colonel Joubert, uh, Chief Newton, and Chief Kotzer. Thank you, everybody, for coming. If you have any comments, as usual, you're welcome to drop them on the YouTube video or also on the Facebook video, which will be uploaded a bit later. And um, we're going to... Oh, one last question. What would a geocache event be classified as? Geocaching is a hobby where people go out in the world and... Um, uh, find uh, uh, locations that have been tagged on a map and there's you know, a, a cool little thing that they can go and find and share with other people. So geocaching is, um, that would be an away mission. Um, it would probably be a priority three mission because it's a, a fun casual event um, and it could be a lot of fun. If you're interested in scheduling a geocaching away mission, Chief Kotza, please do so. All right, that's it. No more questions until next time. Please feel free to drop some on uh, YouTube, on Facebook or contact me via Discord or whatever else 